Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI Frontier series, a global collaboration between Reuters Plus and KPMG. I'm your host, Nadira Tudor, and in this two-part episode, we'll be exploring new value creation in the banking and financial services sector. Banking has long used AI to make the industry smarter, but the adoption of Gen AI tools is adding significant value beyond anything the sector has seen before. I'll be exploring this critical topic with leaders from both financial institutions and KPMG. First, we'll head to Madrid, Spain, and join Francisco Uria, known as Paco, from KPMG. Hello, Paco. As global head of banking and client markets, you're at the forefront of these developments. In your opinion, is AI really set to revolutionize banking and financial services? What I am seeing in our banking clients globally is absolutely unprecedented. The disruption that the artificial intelligence in the new generation is bringing to the banking business model uh, is uh, completely different to every technological change I have been, I have seen in my professional life. And uh, the banks has already realized on that. It has two main dimensions. First of all, the potential gain of efficiency is going to be massive. But the second and more important one is about the perception of the clients. The client perception of the bank's capability to better serve them personally is going to improve a lot. And the banks has already, have already realized on the enormous potential this have. So the size of the investments they are making to make it possible are also unprecedented. So what exactly will this unprecedented disruption do for the banking industry in the future? We have now a newcomer that is uh, Gen AI. And what Gen AI is bringing is a completely different uh, scale of transformational power in the banking business model transformation. And this means in the end, not only gaining efficiency, which is important, but also the capability of being able to provide better services and more tailored for the clients in the future. Now, you mentioned a transformational shift there. KPMG's recent report talks about the move from a product focus model to a customer centric one. Is this one of the key shifts you expect to see? Yes, what I would say is that the, one of the key part of this is about knowing better your customer or your client and for different purposes. The first, of course, could be products, services that are more tailored for specific for the client, but also to be able to prevent fraud, to proper uh, risk management, to anticipate problems in their relationship, future claims to come, to know where the client is not happy, with the services you are providing to them. And this is the point in which the new generations of artificial intelligence are giving the banking industry the power to reuse or to use for the very first time the massive information they have on their clients to be able to better serve their needs. And on that client side, how do you alleviate any fears they may have when it comes to the increased use of AI? I would say that it's not only the clients. You also need to start working with your own people, with your employees. So the concept of, of trust is also internal. You need your employees to be confident in the use of the technology, to know about the risk they are going to manage, but to be sure that the bank and themselves are going to be able to manage it properly, avoiding any additional risk for the clients. So trust starts internally, that's what I would say. The KPMG report outlined three phases of AI transformation. What strategies should banks be prioritizing to maximize returns on AI investments? The first thing you need to do is, is to have a, a robust start from the very beginning and that is enabled, so that means having the right technological and digital infrastructure. So you need data quality, you need governance, you need training your people, all of this you need to start. In the second phase, the embed 
is the, the, the natural evolution of the previous phase in which you start changing your products, changing your, your services, reshaping your internal procedures, gaining efficiency with the use of artificial intelligence. And the third, that is the, the, the final evolution, I would say that has to do with the complete transformation of the banking business model. To reshape it completely and to restart in a very different way of working and serving your clients. And that means being brave, investing, perhaps in a moment in which profit, profitability in the short term is not granted, but you need to evolve, you need to move. Because one, one thing is certain, that those that uh, do not move quick enough in the artificial intelligence fly, those are the ones that are going to have great difficulties to compete in the very near future. Going to London now in the UK, and I'd like to bring in Joe Sam from UBS. Hi, Nadira. Thank you for having me here today. Joe, we've just heard Paco describe the effect of AI as a complete change in everything that financial institutions are doing. Does this ring true from a financial services perspective? Yeah, absolutely. So AI is the lever for asset manager to address industry pressures and to unlock growth. So AI accelerate market analysis so that people can make more informed decisions automate routine processes and enable personalized client experiences driving better outcome and engagement. For example, advanced machine learning and natural language processing capture real-time market sentiment from financial report, social media, or even market news that traditional methods could miss. In terms of using that AI lever to unlock growth, UBS has been on its own journey with products such as UBS Red. Tell us more about AI at UBS. Yeah, UBS is committed to becoming an AI-first institution, embedding AI into our daily operations. As you know, successful AI relies on vast amount of high-quality data. Over the past few years, we have invested heavily in building out our data and cloud foundation to set the stage for AI at scale. A flagship example is UBS Red, providing our employee instant access to the bank vast knowledge with over 160 year history from investment research to market intelligence to products to and many other insights in multiple languages. It improves efficiency in client interactions, more targeted content as advisor can retrieve insights within seconds. Now let's explore that commitment to being an AI-first institution. How does regulation affect the way you're approaching this transformation? Yeah, UBS applies a rigorous global AI governance framework, a robust internal controls from ideation to design to development, ethics, training, deployment and monitoring. We also collaborate proactively with regulators and ensure AI usage aligns with local law and strict ethical standards worldwide. For instance, we work closely with our providers to ensure our cloud platforms meet banking security requirements and local data residency rules. Looking ahead then, Joe, where do you see the challenges and opportunities from AI in the coming years? Yeah, key challenges including managing complex legacy data and talent upskilling. Looking ahead, AI will enable hyper-personalized client experiences and automated decision-making, with UBS committed to continuous innovation and responsible oversight. Importantly, human expertise remain indispensable for judgment, creativity and interpersonal skills. That's great. Thank you for all those insights, Joe. If I could bring you in now, Benoit, joining us from New York, America. Benoit, good to see you. Hello, Nadira. Good to see you too. It seems there are numerous transformations happening here. Is this your sense? A lot of changes happening at the same time. I mean, technology disruption is out there. AI is at the forefront of everyone's discussion. Uh, advanced analytics. All these actually are forcing the banks to actually make a lot of investment into technology to change the way they are working. Our regulatory landscape keeps changing. There are more and more regulations coming out of the US and Europe. 
especially around data privacy, I would say as well as uh, cybersecurity that we banks need to continue making an investment on. And then from a competition perspective, now that the fintechs are in, they also see a lot of changes in terms of how their traditional products are being offered back to their clients by the fintechs, and they need to adapt to that. All of this happening together actually makes it a very interesting moment for the banks. Change is happening on multiple fronts then. What effect is this having across the sector? The way I think about this is because of all of these, their customers are also expecting them to offer better products. Their customers want better experience that the fintechs are offering. They need to invest in technology to make sure that they are seamless products. The entire onboarding is actually seamless and digital. So a lot of this requires them to make the investment that they may not have actually made in a traditional environment. Plus the regulators, obviously, they need to react back to the regulators to make sure it's also being done the right way. And what role is innovation playing in all of this? If you think about it, at least two banks out there have announced AI-based financial advisors, which is essentially there's going to be an AI-based solutions that is going to allow their own financial advisors to create a really good experience, hyper-personalized products is what they're calling it, right? So using AI to actually provide better products to customers is already happening. There's a lot of discussion happening around better customer support using AI-based chatbots, making sure that you're reacting better to your own customers and offering them better products, credit card products, based on what they are telling a customer support agent live. So AI definitely is helping a lot over there. And then it goes back to also making sure that every employee within the bank has access to the LLM suites, the general set of AI tools in order to improve their own productivity, which in a way goes back to impacting the customer experience as well. Now, historically in every sector, when rapid change occurs, there's always a degree of pushback. Have you persuaded those organizations that have been reluctant to adopt new technologies? I mean, in fact, I'd say there are customers who have been reluctant, but based on their experience at other competitors, I've now asked, started demanding a lot more from the traditional banks. But a lot of their newer customers actually expect this by default, as and when the newer generation is coming up, having a digital platform for them is just the basic expectation. So making sure that you're offering and reacting to your customer needs is definitely what every bank out there is trying to do. And even for those organizations that are happy to adopt AI, what are some of the obstacles or challenges that they're having to navigate? What we often discuss with the client is the entire talent pool, right? You do need a lot of talented individuals to bring AI together. You need the data scientists, you need the engineers, and you need the subject matter experts who actually truly understand what the model is predicting and if that is the right output. So making sure they have actually the right set of people is often a big challenge for the clients. And then there's also a lot of financial considerations when we talk to our clients. I mean, everyone has ideas. I had a client who had 300 models they wanted to create, but implementing AI, especially with the reasoning models, is not cheap. So making sure the financial considerations are also, the, also looked into and they make the right decisions into the right use cases. Those are some of the additional topics that we have discussed with our clients. Finally, Benoit, looking ahead, what should organizations be prioritizing to ensure they get the best return on their AI investments? I would say prioritize enablement of the people. That is going to be big. Making sure they train their existing workforce while identifying new talent is going to be key towards achieving the best out of AI. It's the enablement of the technology as well. Banks have a lot of legacy platforms that needs to be upgraded. They need to build a lot of APIs to actually get the data out of these platforms. So enabling this along with the enablement of the AI technologies out there is going to be the key. And then the enablement of the entire trust framework is what I think they should focus on. So these three combined is probably going to go a long way towards achieving what they want to achieve out of the AI platforms out there. Benoit, thank you. My thanks again to Paco and Joe. Join us for part two of this critical look at how AI is comprehensively changing the banking sector.